how y'all doing? It is your girl, your diva in knowledge, Lady Mocha. I represent Mocha's Ladies Lounge, where I'm always kicking knowledge from a spiritual and logical aspect. Hoping everybody's doing well. We're getting closer and closer to the weekend. So with that being said, y'all, just hanging there, ladies. It's getting getting to that time where you'll be able to woosah, have your drinks, you know, let your hair down, you know, uh, relieve your scalp from your lace wig, whatever you choose to do. Um, it's getting down to that time. I also want to thank so many of y'all ladies. Y'all been showing me so much love. Y'all been in the chat. Y'all been, hell, I be learning from y'all. Y'all be teaching me a thing or two sometimes. So I've been reading the comments. I may don't always respond to every comment because of so many people that's coming over here now. But trust and believe, I be reading. Y'all be schooling me now because even as content creators, we can always learn something from our subscribers as well. So I wanted to get into this right away. I hung out in the chat room at Caramel Rail's channel. Um, if a lot of y'all ladies are not familiar with her, please make sure y'all stop by, show us some love. She gives really good, phenomenal content from a, from a spiritual and logical um, aspect as well. She's really, really good. I've been following her for, I think, probably about a year or so is when I kind of learned from her. So when I learned about her channel. So you guys stop and check out Caramel Rail when you get there in the chat. Please make sure you cash tag Mocha sent me here. Mocha sent me here. Let her know that I sent y'all there. It's imperative that um, content creators know that we be looking out for each other, that we're always supporting one another. And um, we're trying to, you know, expand and help one another's channels and platforms build. So if you go by and show Caramel Real Love, please let her know that Mocha sent you there, okay? So um, I was listening to her chat this morning. Like I said, she really preached a good word. She was telling it like it was. Um, did not know till Caramel Real brought it to my attention that um, Martel Hope, the devil himself, strikes again. He is currently suing Melanie, um, former ex-wife, mother of his children, uh, for money. What he's suing her for is defamation of character, pain of suffering, and emotional distress. When I say the devil just won't give it a break, honey, Lucifer himself will not give it a break. Martel will not move on. He will not go on um, with his life. And you would think by now, with the way everything that has unraveled and has blown up in his face, that he would take a slice of humble pie and say, you know what, Lord, I surrender to you. I realize that I have bitten off more than I can chew. I'm going to have to humble myself and give you authority over my life and let you lead me because so far everything that I have done within my own will and strength I have become a train wreck I have become a tornado I have torn up everything that has you know encountered my path so nevertheless y'all he had the audacity to want to sue Melanie for defamation of character, basically insinuating that Melanie is going around saying bad things that are not true of him. When we all know no one has to say anything bad about Martel because we've seen him do the most demonic and devilish deeds ever since this uh, situation that transpired uh, between him and and Arian appetizer airhead um having an adulterous relationship and a child little helmet being conceived out of it so he does not have character for anybody to defame if anything he defamed himself based off of his actions and the things that he have the things that he has done as a husband that he was not supposed to do so nobody has to de defame his character. He's done a great job of that by himself. Um, pain and suffering. All of us know no one has to, had to endure no more pain and suffering than Mel. Mel is the only one that has endured pain and suffering throughout this whole ordeal. 
with his embarrassment, with his lies, with his cockiness, the fact that he has no remorse in the fact that he will team up with any of her allies that he feels can help him attack her because misery likes company and he does not um, want to, he, he's not man enough and he's not strong enough to go up against Mel on his own. So he has to recruit other haters to participate in a hating campaign against Mel. And that's what he's been doing, which is something that women normally would do. So um, we've already seen Martel act out in a very feminine nature. When he gets mad, he gets petty. Um, he will team up with your allies, your women who don't even like you. He will team up with anybody. Um that was against them as husband and wife, but because y'all are not husband and wife anymore, you are siding with the enemies. You're trying to uh, bond, you know, uh, build a friendship with Marceau and Tisha when, you know, they didn't even like neither one of y'all to begin with, but you have so much hatred, hatred and hostility towards your wife. You don't care who you have to sacrifice. You don't care about sacrificing um, a bond to, that y'all still have to a major degree because y'all have children together. So you never side with an enemy just to prove a point because again, you and Mel, he, him and Mel was a team. And even if even though they they're not on that level of husband and wife, they're still a team because they do have children together. But this is what happens when you're dealing with a demon. A demon has no discretion. They will take any means necessary um to try to sabotage you to try to ruin you um and that's just you know where it is you know uh and, and this is the point of the return to where it has gotten to this point and this is why he is where he is right now so nevertheless um uh, also emotional distress trying to insinuate he doesn't get to see his children enough and we all know it, it's just bogus. Um, at this point, Martel is drowning. And, um, you know, he's trying to come up for air by any means necessary. Desperation is at an all-time high for him. Uh, he's reaching for anything at this point in time because he has lost so much. And he is continuously losing. And uh, my only fear in this situation, but I strongly believe, and I know that there is a God who sits high and he protects his children. But um, basically, uh, Martel is a tornado. And I mentioned this before, that anything in his path, he's willing to destroy it because he's spiraling out of control. Um, he has no plan. He has no real goals at this point. And um, Melanie's success is eating him up like cancer. And the fact that he's no longer able to capitalize off of it, um, he's no longer able to have that control in which he can manipulate to, to, to gain what he wants. Um, you know, all of that, you know, is, is really making him lose his sanity. And uh, Martel was already a piece of work. He was already a very evil-spirited type of guy. And the backlash, the, the, the consequences that are, are part of his reckoning and arrival with karma um, is just making him manifest his evil ways. It's just manifesting his evil ways even more because this was already implanted in him. And now that he's losing control it's um it, it's being taken to another level now basically martel is emptying everything out of his clip he almost has no more bullets left in the chamber you know at, after this i don't know what else he can possibly do because he's already embarrassed and damaged um his marriage in the worst way possible so um i'm just hoping um God intercedes and intervenes, which I already know God is interceding. And he is the reason Mel is still kept strong, the reason she is still strong in this situation. But I'm praying that the Lord intercedes with 
Martell before the devil keeps using him and pumping him up because this guy, um, he has, he's getting to the point to where he almost has nothing left to lose. And when a person has nothing left to lose, they don't care who they destroy in the process. Because like the good word says, in the last days, man shall become lovers of himself, of themselves. And that is exactly what Martell is doing. And he's not understanding that the love for himself and the love for his own pleasures is how he got in the situation to begin with. And Martell is not going to take accountability. It's not going to happen and whenever you're dealing with a person that refuses to take accountability be prepared they are going to they're they're going to go in tornado mode they're going to destroy any and everything that steps into their path martel has been out of control for a very long time and uh it all started in his childhood in his childhood and has manifested all the way up into his manhood which we all know he is not a man, but he's acting like he's from, he's a man from the hood. He doesn't have a real manhood. He just acts like a man that's from the hood. Ratchet, arrogant, refusing to take accountability, and so forth. So, getting back to the steak and potatoes at hand. Why the cheating husband won't move on? You have to realize, men like Martell, and you have several Martells within the world, there's thousands of them, um, all women at some point or another could relate to dealing with a Martell. Maybe your ex-husband was a Martell. Your baby daddy was a Martell. Your ex-fiance was a Martell. Maybe you're currently dealing with a Martell right now, uh, who you know has basically... Uh, brought the relationship to the point of no return that it needs to end but you're struggling trying to detach yourself from this demonic man because he's so manipulative um he tries to make you feel guilty about not wanting to keep working things out it's the same line relationships takes time we all make mistakes we all got to learn to move on um he knows how to use the right words to psychologize you into believing that um, you know, eventually he will change. Things are going to work out for the better. Give us some time. I know I messed up. Listen, if the actions is not backing up the words he's saying, consider it dead. Consider it dead weight. The word, if the words are not in alignment with the actions, you can talk a good one all day. Anybody can talk a good game, but you still have to show and prove. Unless he's made those changes and those changes have been consistent, uh, we there are men who have been in situations in which they messed up their marriages and they know this was the last and final straw. This was the last draw for a card. He could pull out the Uno deck. He got his stuff together. He's not out there in the streets. All his wife has all the passcodes to the phones, to the safe, to the bank account. No more shadiness. He's matured and realized I'm a grown ass man. I got to get my sugar honey iced tea together. It's not worth it. I went out there, had my little playmate time. It's time for me to lock on down and be a man. I realize ain't nothing out there. Some men come to that point, but the truth is most of them do not. And Martell, we have these Martells out here who always are spared more chances than they deserve. And, and instead of them perceiving that as a blessing, that this woman is willing to still tolerate me after everything that I have done because any other woman would have walked and never looked back, I know this is a real one. I know this is one I got to keep. I know I got to hold on to this one because ain't no way. I had a guy tell me that one time. I had a guy when I was uh, going to the police academy at the time. And um, there was a, a, a white guy, and we were talking about marriages and different things like that. And he told me, he said, look, my wife has taken so much off of me, I owe that woman the world, and there's nothing I won't do for her. She told me to jump, I say how high. He said, I love my wife because the things that I did, I should have been counseled. And the fact that that woman still willing to put up with me, Ain't no way in the world I'm going to jeopardize that. Ever, ever again. 
I came so close to losing and she was reaching out her breaking point. I got my shit together and I walked a fine line ever since then. So even though we hear a cheater is always a cheater, that's not necessarily always the case. Some of us got to go through things and in order for us to gain maturity, to gain, to gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You don't gain knowledge through doing the right thing. If you think about it, everything that you're doing right in your life wasn't because you learned by doing something right. You failed somewhere. You fumbled somewhere. So don't go around discrediting folks because of what you hear in social media. Well, once a cheater, always a cheater. Once a man messed up, always messed up. We all have cheated, whether it was in a marriage, whether if it was on your job, acting like you learned certain things till you got to where you had to fake it till you make it to, to, to get to where you was going. We all have failed and not been, uh, not always used our best of judgment in certain situations but i get it you got some women hey once you cheat on me that's zero zero um tolerance for that i'm not going to accept it especially if a child comes out of it i get it i don't knock on no woman who stays in that situation or no woman who goes so before we get in the chat room and get dragging other women who have made decisions different from ours her journey is supposed to be different from yours. And that's the only thing I don't like about women is that because a woman makes a different decision, we, we feel our decision is so honorary um, and we're so self-assured that we want to scald and ridicule another other women who want to stay in their marriage, who want to work things out. Um, God doesn't extend the same amount of grace to everybody. Some of us don't have the tolerance that others have. Some of us don't have the patience others have. And it doesn't make you less of a woman, more of a woman. It just makes you a different kind of woman. You're different. None of us are better. We're different in how we move. We're different in how we manage our lives. We all are different. Nobody is better um, one than the other. But what makes different women different from other women is you have some women out here who do not learn. Doing the same thing, expecting different results, basically stupidity. Done been going through it with the same man over and over, or keep going through it with different men over and over. Same shit, different toilet. You get what I'm saying? That's that's where that's where a, we as women start to lose our self worth. It's when we allow the damage over and over and over. You forgive, forget once. He's straightening up his actions. Y'all married to in a much better place. You feel more secure with him now. And he's showing you, not just telling you. Then that's different. So don't let none of these women sit up here and make you feel bad about your journey and what you choose. Because it's stuff that they going through that you wouldn't deal with. All of us got our own tolerance level. What I deal with, you ain't going to deal with. And what you deal with, I probably ain't going to deal with. But the thing is, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is where we fall short. That's the problem. It's not what you go through. It's have you learned from it. And what do you plan on doing from here on out not to fall back in that same entrapment. Learn so you don't continuously keep getting burned. Bottom line. Anyway, let me go back. <laughs> let me switch gears again because I'm digressing. Why the cheating husband won't move on? First of all, you have these Martells who you have to realize most men that have lost their marriages due to situationships, meaning getting themselves in situations that they should have not gotten themselves involved in to begin with because they have made the made an oath before God before uh b before a vow before their wives that I am committed to you for better or for worse for sickness and health Nowhere in the vows it says, I'm only committed to you except when I feel you're not satisfying me. Except when I see a cute little tenderoni and I want to smash. There's no exceptions 
for better or for worse, sickness and health. That that is that is what's written in the vows. And you take it upon yourself to violate those vows. To violate that covenant. Because like I told y'all in my last content, marriage is not just marriage. There's more to it than running out here getting an expensive wedding gown. Ordering an expensive um, six top tier tower cake. That the, that that is a wedding. Wedding and marriage, neither one mean the same thing. They do go together, but they have a different meaning. You have too many women more infatuated with the wedding than actually having a marriage. They will run out there and make all these plans. They pick out a wedding dress. Pick out everything for their bridesmaids before they actually go to counseling and make sure they have a marriage before actually having a wedding. And wonder why when the wedding is over and after everybody got their gifts, now you got to go home and you're seeing things about this person that you did not realize that you overlooked because you were so consumed with the wedding than the marriage. If you was into knowing and understanding that man's mental psyche on what he perceives as marriage from a husband perspective, just as much as you were into um, what type of gown you was going to pick from David's bridal, if you use that same interest, that same energy and an interest of that gown that you did in learning that man, you might would have saw a whole lot that would have made you delay that marriage and say that delay that wedding and say, you know what? We got some work we need to do. Bump picking out wedding dresses and, and making out invitations. I need to make sure this man, his head is on right before I become his wife. You have these married men who get involved in these situationships. Knowing they're married, disrespecting their wives, disrespecting that. Um, spiritual covenant because that's what marriage is it's a spiritual covenant um it's it's a spiritual bond that is that that has been ordained and covered underneath the will of god because that's what marriage is and he decides to taint that covenant by stepping outside of his marriage outside of his home and fornicating uh, co committing adultery, let me say that correctly, fornicating is when two unmarried people, in this case, he decides to commit adultery because that's what it is. He's a married man with a single woman. Both have had a sexual encounter, which has tampered, defiled the marriage. So, on that note, everything is fine and dandy as long as there's an extensive amount of sneaking and creeping. You sneak, you creep, and you get more and more, um, you get more and more comfortable. You, you become less careful with your actions the longer you prolong in a situationship, which means having sexual relations outside your marriage. So the longer you continue the situationship, as a married man, you're dealing with this woman, you're spending money on this woman, you're spending a lot of time with this woman, which means now, not only have y'all physically invested in one another by having multiple um, sex sessions you've also um, started gaining an emotional and, and, and even worse so a spiritual attachment because keep in mind marriage is designed for married people so the reason it was designed for married people 
Um, for those of you who love to fornicate and be side chicks, or you just love to get the dick, you know, because women, ever since we've been given the past with being liberated, we have overly abused and misused our bodies um, because we feel liberated to do so. But the Bible, and men too, because we got men whores out there who male Jezebels, same thing. Um, when you take it upon yourself, and you uh you put yourself in situationships and you start to become intimate with this person on numerous occasions you start bonding with them you start developing feelings emotions and that bond is now um connecting to both of you because that is what that that is really what sex is for sex is for married people to build a spiritual bond. Um, to put this in more simpler terms, um, it's kind of like you, you can have uh, two pieces of wood. And let's say you're building something and you got two pieces of wood, like you're trying to build a dollhouse or something like that with, with your grandchildren or your, or your children or whatever. And you... Put two pieces of glue to, I mean, I'm sorry. You put two pieces of wood together because you're trying to build a foundation. You're building a dollhouse. So you got to put these pieces of, of wood together. Keep in mind, when you put those two pieces of wood together, they're not really together unless there's a sealant. There has to be some type of glue or adhesive um, component that's going to keep those two pieces of wood together. Keep And once that adhesive is applied between two pieces of wood, now the wood is solid. Meaning two pieces of wood are now joined together. They can't be separated. They can't be divided. The husband is one part of that wood and the wife is one part of that wood. And what that adhesive, uh, that adhesive um, liquid or component or glue joins those two pieces of wood together, now it has solidified, made both pieces of the wood stronger together, which means they, they, can't, they, can't, they, they can't be broken apart. That is the reason what, why God designed marriage why God designed sex for marriage. Sex is what keeps the marriage solid, keeps the marriage um, um, rejuvenated. It keeps the marriage um, consecrated. That, that's, that, that is what keeps the marriage solid. A lot of people have sex so misconstrued, thinking that they can just go around and smash and pass on everybody, pump and dump, and that's not what God really d designed sex for. Sex is supposed to be a gift between a husband and a wife. Orgasms should only be shared between a husband and a wife. And the reason that an orgasm feels good or, or, or the reason we climax because that is the reward that a husband is giving his wife pleasure and his wife is and, and his wife is giving him pleasure. The climax is supposed to be a gift specifically for husbands and for wife. A lot of y'all not ready for this conversation because you've been doing you for so long. You think you know what you think you know what sex is designed for because your flesh has been leading you all of this time like it's leading many others. Like it has led Arion and Martel um, to get involved in the situationship. But I thought it was imperative that I stressed that, that sex is designed for married people. So when... You take another object, and going back to the analogy when I talked about the two pieces of wood, and you have that adhesiveness, that glue, that has placed both pieces of wood together. And let's say a foreign object, you decide to take a match or a lighter, 
and you start lighting up the glue, you, you cause heat, you cause friction to the glue that has the two pieces of wood glued together. What happens is that now that you have applied the heat, the glue starts to melt, which means now uh, once the heat has caused the glue to melt between the two pieces of wood, now the two pieces of wood have fallen apart. They're no longer joined together because there is a foreign component which changed, which altered the purpose of why the glue was sealing two of the pieces together to begin with. The glue was there to hold two pieces of the wood together. But because heat, which was not even included or not even part of how the two pieces of the wood came together, that different component altered the whole purpose of why the two pieces of wood was together. And that is the same thing with these outside affairs. Once you start bringing in other components, it alters um, the foundation that God is trying to build between a man and a woman. And this is why between, I'm sorry, between a husband and a wife. And this is the reason why we have all the problems we have now, because we have allowed the flesh to lead us instead of allowing the word to lead us. And this is where we are. We're no longer following the word. We're following the world, which is entertaining the flesh. This is what I want. I'm horny. I got my own ulterior motives. Uh, I got my own needs that need to be fulfilled. I'm going to sleep with this man. I don't care if he is married. I don't care if he does have a family. I, the flesh it's letting the flesh, I'm letting the flesh lead me by saying, this is what I want. This is what I need. Because again, it is, you're feeding those fleshly desires, which is worldly desires. And when you step outside the word, you get more into the world. And that is when you start dealing with worldly issues and you start creating worldly problems. This is the reason why we got child support. This is the reason why we got a lot of single parent homes. This is the reason why we have a lot of divorces rates. All because people have strayed away from the word and went into the world. My flesh, my won't my needs, what I want, what I need. It's all about man pleasuring themselves. So anyway, after a man has pleasured himself by continuously stepping outside of his household all time of night, meeting his Jezebel two, three in the morning, becoming more and more comfortable with disrespecting his marital union, coming home, disrespecting his wife, talking to his wife all kind of way, taking her out of her element of peace because he's not at peace because he's out here still getting the peace. And this is what a lot of men and women don't understand. When you start having other situationships outside of your marital marriage, um, you have bonded with another individual and all of that and, and that individual's negative traits or demonic traits has now binded with yours. It has bonded with your good traits and it has bonded with your bad traits. This is the reason you come home being a hellraiser. This is the reason why you find the stuff to bitch about and complain about because what you have done was you have had a sexual encounter outside of your marital union which has altered, it has tainted your spiritual covenant with your wife. That's why you have an attitudes. That's why you complaining because you have joined with, you have spiritually joined with another woman who was having sex with you and during the time, during the encounter when y'all was exchanging climaxes and exchanging orgasms, that woman's spirit that resents your wife, oh my gosh, that woman's spirit that you have slept with that hates and despises your wife has now been poured into you.
Lord Jesus. Woo! Listen, y'all. I didn't even know that. I'm learning this as I'm talking to you. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, deal with me. Let me run out by y'all again in case y'all didn't catch it. Anytime a side chick sleeps with your husband or your, hu your husband is having adulterous relationships, nine times out of ten, that woman already knows he's married. And she's angry with the wife, already resenting the wife, which is the reason why she has no problem defiling and entertaining um, her husband and having sexual relations. So realize that hurt and that anger and that animosity she, he ha she has towards you, she's pouring that into your husband because she has already spiritually bonded with him through sexual relations. This is the reason he comes home he's bitching about stuff. He's complaining about stuff. Her empty spirit, her angry spirit has transferred into him. Like I told y'all before, STDs, spiritually transmitted demons. A lot of you, you probably never, if your husband stepped out there or whatever, you probably didn't, you got spared. You didn't get syphilis. You didn't get gonorrhea. You didn't get AIDS. But what you did get was a different STD that's hard to detect unless you're in the spirit that there's no cure for unless you truly repent. There's no doctor that can give you any type of medication for STD, spiritually transmitted demons. Those demons from her have transferred into the marriage. Now, all of a sudden, you're angry. He's angry because uh, him having sexual relations outside of the marriage. He has broken the covenant. And like I said, and it's a spiritual thing, and I, and I noticed a lot of y'all was chiming in on it, which, which, which let me know that a lot of you ladies understood 100% where I was coming from. So I'm glad that a lot of people are aware of this. This is not something that a lot of people are, are oblivious to. Because the more you know, a lot of things you can avoid. Um, It's more than just a side chick hating you. Not liking the wife. Because, you know, evidently she desires your husband and wants your husband. But it has to do with the fact, once your husband has had sexual relations with the side chick... She has become joined to your covenant that she has broken. And when I mean joined, it doesn't mean that she's a part of the, 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 the marital union in a positive way. She's part of it in a damaging way, meaning she broke the covenant, but she's bonded to it. It's kind of like this. When you go out here and you commit a law, you commit a crime, and um, you end up getting incarcerated for it. You know what I mean? Um... Meaning that you are joined to the crime you committed. That is why you're incarcerated. Because you broke a law. You violated a law. You are a part of the system now. You are a part of the criminal justice system. And that's not a good thing to be a part of. That's the same way it works when you become a side chick. You have basically signed a deal with the devil because the devil is out to destroy marriages and he used you your gullibleness your stupidity your desperation he and he the, the the enemy capitalized off of that and because you're a woman that's not in the spirit you didn't flee from the scene when you saw the devil which was the married man approaching you Desperation is, is a terrible perfume to wear, ladies. It's not a good look. So, after y'all had y'all sescapades, meeting at the Motel 6, going out to Waffle House afterwards, sneaking and creeping, going out of town, traveling, living your best life, so y'all think. Exposure eventually gets the best of you. You get caught. And now that everything's out in the open. And it's brought to the surface. Now karma starts collecting. Karma starts collecting. 
because you have broken a spiritual covenant that God respects. This is what a lot of men and women don't understand. God respects marriage. You can you can hold your head high being a proud side chick. You can hold your head high being a male Jezebel. You can hold your head, head high being a cheating wife, knowing you're disrespecting your husband. You can do all of that. But keep in mind, it does not negate the fact God is going to hold you accountable. It got nothing to do with you think you should be held accountable or not. Because we know it's, Mar it's men like Martel and females, these appetites like Arion, they're not going to hold themselves accountable. And that's cool. But God is going to keep making them suffer the raft based off of their actions, not respecting his covenant. Because whether we want to believe it or not, marriage belongs to God. Marriage don't belong to us. Marriage belongs to God. And he takes it very seriously when he gives you something that's supposed to be a blessing and you destroy it. He will penalize those who don't respect something that he created as a blessing. So everything's out in the open, like with Martel, because him and Arion got so comfortable doing what they were doing to the point that a child was conceived. That's just how long it had been going on. Till they, they been stopped being careful. Been stopped using protection. Martel uh, went all the way out the door to, to, to disrespecting his wife to a whole nother level. He was already disrespecting his marriage by dealing with Arion. But that is how the flesh works. The flesh, you can never feed it enough. The flesh wants you to keep escalating and taking disrespect to a whole nother level. You already out here fornicating, committing adultery. Now, we're going to go ahead and get a child involved in the midst of your fornicating and your, and your adultery. Which only adds way more chaos to uh, an unhealthy, unholy, sinful situation. So, when the husband gets caught, and the wife has finally gotten to that broken point, has finally gotten to that place of, I can no longer forgive, I can no longer accept, I tried to give you the benefit of a doubt, because I thought you was going to straighten up, because this is the thing, I'm going to let you ladies know this, stop degrading women who want to stay in their marriages, stop disrespecting women who want to stay in their marriages, male was never wrong to begin with. And a lot of women have been going in hard on her from the beginning um, by going after her. She shouldn't have stayed with him. She was done for putting up with that long. First of all, when it comes to marriage, there's no, there's no manual to the perfect marriage. She was doing what a wife is supposed to do. She stood by him for the better or for worse. That's what the vows say. The vows didn't say unless he's caught doing something that's not how the vows work however when she saw her dedication was not paying off and it was not enough for martel to appreciate and value her that is when she made the decision to divorce him and she had every right to do so because she did it the right way she stood by the better or for worse, sickness and health. But Martel made it so unbearable to even try to stand with him because he was so disrespectful to her on top of disrespecting the marriage. You already creeping and sneaking outside the house all time of night, but then you come home, you chewing me out, you disrespecting me. And the insult of the injury, you letting your Jezebel disrespect me. She's calling the house whenever she wants. She's disrespecting me, calling me all kind of hoes and bitches. How you going to call me a hoe when you're hoeing with my husband that I'm married to? How you going to sit up here and say, I wanted to have a baby because you had a baby. This is my husband. I'm allowed to have 20, 30, 40 babies from him because we're married. Marriage is designed between a husband and wife to produce and have children. Marriage is not designed, designed for side holes or appetizers or side orders to have children. So anyway, he realizes now he done lost. Once he lost his marriage 
That was the beginning of his troubles. He kept losing after that. All type of business ventures. He hasn't been successful with his wine. Hasn't been successful um, trying to uh, get other people to partnership with him because of his reputation with his wife. Um, he has just failed terribly at everything. And a lot of us look at it like, oh, he just, uh, um, he, he's just having bad luck. It ain't bad luck. This is karma. This is what happens when the forces that be start penalizing you for the fact that you took God's covenant for granted. It's not so much karma. It is the wrath of God because he disrespected not so much just male. That's part of it. But the bigger the bigger piece of the pie, ladies, is the fact that he disrespected God's covenant. It's not just marriage. I need y'all to get that through y'all thick heads. I need y'all to get that under y'all lace wigs, your wigs, your real hair, whatever. Understand. In, in the sex of the cr in the, in the sex of the cranium of your brains, that's God's bond. So not only did he betray himself and Mel in the marriage, he betrayed God. God does not like betrayal. He does not like arrogance. Matter of fact, uh, let me pull up this scripture here. Make sure I pull up this, this scripture. 2 Timothy, verse 3. No, ch no, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. In the last days, there will be very difficult times, for people will only love them, will only love them will love only themselves and their money they will be boastful proud scuffing at god disobedient to their parents and ungrateful proverbs chapter 16 verse 5 the lord hates everyone who is arrogant he will never let them escape punishment <laughs> tell me the word ain't real this is why Martel cannot move on he cannot move on because understand he broke God's trust it's bigger than just violating his wife he disrespected the covenant of God the anointing Though he may dissemble his pride and not discovered in his looks by his words and gestures, yet the Lord sees and knows the heart, the naughtiness of it, and the pride that is in it. And only a proud look, but a proud heart is abom abominable to him. Everyone that is so arrogant as to arraign the degrees of God and quarrel with him about them, to whom the apostle says, Neighbor, O man, O proud, vain man, who art thou that repliest against God? That repliest against God. And Martel is very arrogant and cocky. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty, but sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Now you do know that goes both ways, not just sleeping with another man's wife, but sleeping with another woman's husband. And the reason I, I do, when we hear what prostitution, we're thinking automatically of a call girl or, you know, some hood rat walking down the street with her booty cheeks out. But a prostitute is any woman who is, is accepting some type of compensation. And believe it or not, Arian Appetizer is accepting compensation by gifts, trips, him paying her bills. She's on the same level of a prostitute. And about and the word says here in Proverbs 6, 26, that they will bring you to poverty. And that's just what she's done. Brought him to poverty, y'all. 
Sleeping with another man's wife, but in this case, sleeping with another woman's husband will cost you your life. And it is costing her her life. She has no peace. She cannot grow. She cannot prosper. Everything she's tried along with Martel. Notice, listen. Notice Martel and Arion are the ones that are consistently losing. It is not Mel because Mel did not break the covenant. Even though Martel has tried to lie for years on that woman. Because he didn't want to be guilty by himself. Making up stuff. Well, I know you was messing with some man. You was talking to other dudes. That that was the, that is what the narcissist does. He will deflect and gaslight because you don't want to be wrong by yourself. Even though you don't have a whole child out here, you don't want to go down by yourself. You don't want to look like you don't you're the only bad person in the situation. But it's funny how him and Arion, they're the ones who've been having nothing but bad luck. Because they were the ones who broke the covenant. That is why God is not punishing Mel. He is punishing the both of them. They violated the covenant. Because that's God's covenant. Marriage belongs to God. Why are you thinking you can do whatever you want to do to your husband or your wife? God is going to shut the operation down. Because you're betraying him. For by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of, of bread. Basically, you brought down to the lowest common denominator once you done got involved with a horse female. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. That's what she's been doing. She's been trying to live off a male through Martel. Obsessed with this woman. Trying to look like this woman. Trying to be like this woman. Trying to start her own businesses. And, and have failed terribly. And the word. Like the word says. The adulteress. Meaning the side chick. The appetizer. Slow slaw. Cold slaw. Whole slaw. Will hunt for the precious life. That's what she's doing. She will prey upon his precious life. That is what she's doing. This is why Martel cannot move on. He betrayed God for his flesh. He made a deal with the devil. And this is the way the devil operates. The devil will give you everything you want. And once he got you where he don't want you, where he got you where he wants you, and you start losing everything, he flees the scene. He don't want you no more. Even the devil don't want Martel no more. He done got his fun. He done got everything out of him. He done got him to do Everything he needed him to do. Once the devil has accomplished his mission, he, he don't want you no more. He discards you. Martel is going to continue to keep losing more. He won't move on because he realizes that he had, everything he ever had was through Mel. Mel was his Siamese twin. Y'all ever seen those two twins that like joined together at birth? And, you know, in some, in some instances, they've been, doctors have been able to successfully, um, disjoin them. But, um, for the most part, they came here joined. That is the way marriage works. When you destroy your husband and wife, do you not realize you destroy yourself? Do you not realize you destroy the covenant you made with God? That's the biggest betrayal. Everybody looking at, he betrayed Mel, he betrayed Mel, he betrayed his kids. Yes. But most importantly, he betrayed God. God trusted him with his daughter, which is Mel. When you marry, keep in mind, all of us are God's children. So when we decide to make the decision to become God's husband, when we just make the decision to decide to become somebody's husband or wife through holy matrimony, and you and you say those vows for, get a, for better or for worse, for sickness and health, you're telling God, I'm going to do right by this blessing you gave me. I'm going to do right by your child. That's why a man leaves home. He's no longer joining his parents. He's joining his wife. God is saying, I trust you to be responsible with my daughter. And women, we're not off the hook either. God trusts us to be responsible for our husbands. But he does hold the men more accountable to a degree because he are the one 
men are who God has appointed as leaders. So when the leader is not out here leading, instead he's indulging in the flesh. When you're not leading, you cause the bleeding. Martel was not leading. That's how he was able to cause bleeding. Had he been leading, he wouldn't have had time to intervene a whole round because he would have been too busy holding down his marriage, holding down his children. He would have been uh, uh, having full access to being a leader. Because Mel was leading everything, that's how come he had room to go out there and fornicate. Because he wasn't leading nothing. But the only thing that was leading anything was his penis was leading him over there to Arion. And his flesh caused him to sign the deal with the devil. And this is the reason why he's going after Mel. He can't be at peace. He's trying to sue her, but trying to give full custody, not understanding everything he has done has been an epic fail. He's not putting the pieces together. He's not understanding that until he truly repents and he takes his hands off of trying to destroy male, then God still, God's mercy and grace can intervene and still somehow, some way bless him to where he can still take care of his children. He can't get ahead because he, he, he has signed a deal with the devil and the devil got him working overtime. Now, this isn't to blame the devil because Martel had a free will. He chose to follow the devil instead of choose the following God, which would have told him, no, honor thy marriage, honor thy wife. No, he honored thy penis. Nigelations, chapter three, verse eight, Nigelations. I will let my I will I will let my penis lead me. I will not lead the house. I will let my penis lead me to somebody else's house. <laughs> Being a leader requires a lot of time, requires a lot of growth. That's why Martel stayed stagnant because he was not doing what, the, what the, the purpose that God had fulfilled for him as a husband, meaning lead your household. And that's the reason why God has shifted everything into Mel's favor because God trusts Mel with authority over his, over his children, which is the children that um, Mel and um, Martel had together. When the person who's supposed to have the leadership abuses it or does not take pride in it, what happens is God will shift the authority and the rewards to the partner who has done right by God, who did respect the vows, who did respect the marriage. That's the reason why male has more. It's not just financially Mel got everything. That's a blessing. But Mel has more peace. Because you can't put a peace of mind on price. You can have all the money you want. But peace is very imp imperative to have peace. Most importantly, Mel has more peace than him and Arion. Both of them was the violators of that covenant. They broke a deal. They disrespected God. That's why the raft is so strong on them. And they don't get it. Because they lack spiritual discernment. He won't move on because this man is not at peace with himself. This man never planned for the day or the hour that it was all going to come back on him. He didn't prepare himself for that. He thought it was going to continue. He was going to he was going to be able to do this for the rest of his life. Most most some narcissistic husbands because not all men do this some narcissistic husbands they think in their mind it's going to be like this till the day they die he never prepared himself that eventually 
all this is going to catch up with me. Let me get my act together. Which is why he kept pushing the pedal to the metal. He kept pushing the envelope because he just never thought it was going to ever come to this place. That's why he's losing it. And I say it all the time. When a man loses control, he gets out of control. You're so used to regulating and manipulating. And because he, he no longer, he lost that ability to control years ago. Now he's acting out of anger. He's lashing out. He's rebelling like Lil Helmet, his son. He's rebelling. He's throwing tantrums. He's cutting up. He acting out. Because he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for this. Martel was nowhere ready for destruction to come upon him in the manner in which it did. He thought he was going to be able to juggle both of those women for the rest of his life. And when it got snatched from up under his foot like a rug, he like a deer in the head like, like well, he's in a culture shock. He's scared as hell. Because he would, he did not, he was not prepared for the wrath of God. He wasn't ready. But that's how karma, the wrath of God, you're never ready. You don't know the time, you don't know the day, you don't know the hour. Pleasure comes with pain. He's struggling moving on, not understanding. It's not so much that male is the one who penalized him by leaving him and divorcing him, but God. This is God's business. What he's not understanding is this between him and God. He's trying to one-up on male, but he's not realizing He's trying to one up on God and God is bigger than him, bigger than life. And he's not going to be able to conquer God. God is so angry with him. And let me tell you something. It's okay for people to be mad with you. It's okay for your children, your husband, your wife, but you don't want God angry. God been fed up with Martel long time ago. And I'm sure he has came to him several times. Martel, stop it. Get your hands off my daughter. Get your hands off my child now. Like, you know, if your child is getting bullied or they come home to you crying about somebody picking on them and everything, you know, and you done addressed this to the school, you done addressed it to the staff, and they still ain't doing anything, they still keep picking on your child, uh, now you got you got to up the ante. You're going to go ham. That's what God is doing with Martel. He can't move on because he hasn't repented. He has not seen for forgiveness. Most importantly, see, what, what, uh, what, what Martel is thinking is that everybody wants him. Everybody, everybody, um, what he's thinking is everybody thinks that he should humble himself so Mel can forgive him. But the bigger piece of the cup puzzle is, first of all, Martel has not forgiven himself. He more mad with himself than he is with Melanie. He is his own worst enemy. He's going to continue to keep unraveling. And in the midst of it, I know God is going to cover. He's going to cover Mel. Now, Arion, she's on her own. But I know if he don't get his hands off of Mel, God is going to continue to keep destroying him. Mel has a praying mother. When you are a praying mother, a praying father, and then on top of that, Mel has a lot of people out here praying for her. When more than one come into agreement, when more than one start praying, now you got something to be scared about. Martel, he's scared, but he's scared of the wrong thing. He's scared of child support. He's scared of getting put off the show. What he need to be scared of is um, the wrath of God because God is not playing with him. And he really needs to get off the show. I agree with Caramel on that, and I've said this several times. Um, he definitely needs to go. He gives. He's not giving a, a positive example of 
what love and marriage in Huntsville is about. It's not just about going out, uh, having a successful wife. You violate that wife. You pick up an airy on airhead, and you still um, come on the show being mean, nasty, vindictive. He is becoming um, cancer to the show. Um, he's becoming a nuisance. Um, I've been stopped watching it. I, I don't watch it. I only hear about it through Black Titanic, Caramel Rail, Roz, you know, and a lot of these other um, fem you know, um, sisters who also are consecrators. I been stop watching that show because I'm tired of seeing somebody with so much disrespect keep getting the pass. He has hurt this woman several times and everybody keeps overlooking Mel's pain and I'm sick of it because all women at some point in time, they can relate to her. Even if you have not gone through it, you can relate to it. And then there are many of us who have gone through it, who can strongly, strongly relate to it. And we're over it. Um, it's just an overkill. It's not funny. It's not entertaining anymore. I'm, we're tired of it. If y'all don't know, and I'm going to leave the link uh, in the bottom. Uh, there's a petition that's going around for everyone to sign for Martel to be canceled, um, taken off the show um, due to his homophobic remarks. And I'm surprised Carlos, being a part of that community, don't have a problem with him having a problem with um, his children being around his uncles who he know has the same lifestyle as he does. I don't get that. I don't see why Carlos overlooked that. We see him disrespect, um, Martel disrespect, his wife disrespect, um, his children. Um, he's been trying to sabotage anybody um, who's... Uh, anything positive that Mel has been doing, I think Carlos not understanding you're sending a bad message to a lot of men out here that are married that it's okay to disrespect women or whatever and you'll still have success. I think you're sending mixed signals. Um, and I, I hate to say it and I want to be respectful with this. Sometimes when it comes to that community, and I'm going to say that as nice, as nicely as I can, that community, some of the men in that other side of the community, they have a low-key animosity towards women because they want to really be like women. So some of them take joy in watching them get attacked or um, be ridiculed because it's, it's a little joy for them because they low-key already hate on women. And I'm going to say that as respectfully as I can without really going all the way there. But a lot of y'all sisters who follow me, y'all y'all are very intelligent women. So you already get my drift without me being detailed. So I'm looking at Carlos with the side eye because like I said, some of them in, on that side, you already ain't fond of, you know, black women, women in general, but even more so black women. So sometimes y'all will allow us to be low, be a, a, a attack on a low key level because you already got your little, you know what I mean, low key um haterism going on, haterade, you know what I mean? And so I'ma just leave it at that. But nevertheless, y'all, um leave y'all comment below. Let me know what y'all think about this. Um, I'm getting ready to shut it down. For those of you who are interested, I do sell cable. I have nine thousand channels worth of cable. You can get my cable app. You can either order the fire stick from me or or if you have a fire stick, I can give you the information to install my app so you can enjoy 9,000 channels worth of streaming. Um, I also sell customized cups. Um, if you look through my archives, I do have um, um, a commercial, a few commercials of the type of customized cups that I personally design um, that you can purchase as gifts. Um, or just for your own personal use. So you're welcome to inbox me for that. Before I exit this video, everything I have said is fair use. Allegedly, and it's for entertainment purposes only. Um, this, everything I said in this content is just based on my opinion. Bottom line, it's just based on my opinion. Okay, so anyway, y'all, ladies, y'all take care. I will holler and chat with y'all soon. It is your girl, your diva, and knowledge. Lady Mocha, represent a Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Y'all be blessed. Take care.